1972, Yosemite was our first national park. It was dedicated and set aside for the enjoyment and the well-being of all people. Indigenous communities also in, um, occupied the Yosemite River region for the last 11,000 years. Their ecology with the space was one in which humans, plants, and animals all coexisted together. It was a very beautiful system. But the way that they connected with the land wasn't valued or respected. Over the next 12 years of the park's dedication, military force was used to remove and sever the connection of these communities from their homes, as well as exclude another half a dozen tribes from accessing that space for seasonal use. We see this pattern repeat over and over again, where communities who connect with the land are either forcibly, forcibly removed or forcibly taken in the name of God, king, country, gold, tobacco, oil, diamonds, chocolate. Can you imagine that? Somebody coming into your home, looking around and saying, I can make a profitable use out of the space. So they take it, leaving you with nothing, no home to retreat to, and they destroy everything you've taken care of. History tells us that it's always more important to destroy for profit than to preserve for community. So we steal the land, call it a public park, and we curate who can come on it and what they can do on it, all that at the expense of indigenous communities. Why is it every time we do something for the greater good, it's people of color who lose their sense of place? Let's fast forward closer to today. The Outdoor Foundation report, their 2018 report about outdoor recreation lists one third of all outdoor recreationalists as making 50 to 100 grand a year. And another th one third of making 100 grand or more. That's the top 10%, with three quarters of all participants being white. Now we've all heard the saying that outdoors is for everyone but we know that's not actually true. These public spaces were not created with people of color or low-income people in mind. If anything, they serve as a little more of a barrier to the outdoors. The activities, the recreational activities listed in the same report were either required a level of expertise, expensive equipment and gear, or were centered around competition or vigorous activities. The most intuitive activity on the list was hiking, of course. But that's if you're lucky enough to live nearby and can access these spaces. And then you have the essential 10, which is the bare minimum amount of gear that you need to get out there, even for a day hike. And we're looking at around a $500 initial investment to get outside in the wild. A lot of these activities resonate a lot of people. For many, they don't. So they don't fall in love and they don't find a reason to get outside and go out there over and over again. And different populations have different needs. As a queer black woman, I don't need my outdoor experience to be another daily challenge. A lot of people don't want to go in spaces where they have to always think about working out or going faster. Sometimes they just want to enjoy nature as it is. Sometimes people don't want to go outside and feel othered. Like, stop comparing me to inner city youth, Karen. I'm almost 40. Sometimes people want to go outside and feel safe, and definitely people don't want to go outside and have racism and queer and trans hatred directed towards them. They do deserve to feel safe in these spaces. When we all think about outdoor recreation, we have made a mistake. We have allowed profit-driven profit activities to dictate what outdoor recreation looks like. So when we talked about people not finding something they fall in love with and not returning. In 2017, 11.9 million people stopped participating in outdoor recreation. Maybe it was a challenge, the accessibility, the lack of love. They could have all played factors in why they didn't return. I consider myself an outdoors. Just this summer alone, I participated in at least six backpacking trips, went camping and canoeing. Last year, in the springtime, I got to summit South Sisters, 
raft almost 100 miles down the Deschutes River and do a lot of outdoor climbing. None of these reasons are why I consider myself an outdoors. And it's something that I'm still discovering. But one thing that I know is that being an outdoors is somebody who does fall in love with outdoors, who finds something that wants to bring them out there over and over again. It's not just about the destination where you take a quick Instagram photo and then you just head straight home. The journey is so important too. So for my mountain summit, I didn't really enjoy my journey. It's the people, the pace, the focus that took me more out of nature than in. The competitive culture of conquering things, bragging rights, bagging peaks. These are not reasons why I want to go in nature. Like I said, in nature experience don't have to be a challenge. Life is challenging for enough for a lot of populations. I want my outdoor experience to be a retreat. I want it to be a journey, but also a discovery and adventure. I want it to feel like freedom. I want my outdoor experience to be relaxation, contemplation, connection, connection with nature, connection with others, connection with myself. There's a lot of health benefits to just being outside. I mean, just being. That's my favorite activity, to just be outside. When I get to just be outside, I love the smell of the ponderosa pine needles that wafts in the air when you're walking on that hollow forest floor. Or you all know the smell of the desert sage when it rains that fills the air. My favorite place to just be is journeying through tall trees in a damp forest where there's moss everywhere. If you wake up early enough, you could roll through the trees as the fog's rolling through. It's so beautiful. And though I've never seen it, I know there's a ferry just around the corner. If you're journeying through these spaces, maybe you could stop at a chatty creek or a roaring river, and you can get so out of routine that you forget that technology even exists. You can decide to camp for a night, you can build a fire, and you can spend the night watching the embers of the fire breathe in and out. One of my favorite sounds at night is the owl's hoot. The way its sound echoes through the trees, it's almost like goddess is speaking directly to you. And whether it is rainy, whether it's cold, hopefully it's sunny and warm, but it never is <laughs> where we live. But I find myself wanting to get out and enjoy these experiences over and over again. And that's why I consider myself an outdoors, because I found that love. My nonprofit is Wild Diversity. And we support outdoor community for people of color and people in the queer and trans community. We are always telling our participants to adventure their own adventure, and we do a wide variety of outdoor activities because we really want them to find something that resonates with them, something where they fall in love, something where when they talk about it, their eyes get wide and their mouth waters, just to think about being in those spaces. So what about you? Do you consider yourself an outdoors? What ways do you feel like you fall in love with the outside? But first, what we need to do is we need to erase all those rules, all those parameters, all those societal expectations, all those societal intimidations. We need to erase what people have told you your experience should be in the outdoors, how stoked you should be by this activity or that. And we need to erase the pressures that we put on ourselves about our outdoor experience. Then what? How would you fall in love with outdoors? What activities do you, have you done that truly resonate with your being where you want to get out there and go out there over and over again? I encourage you to find that thing. And no matter what it is, whether you're leisurely outdoors like me or you like something a little more vigorous, I encourage you to find the way that resonates with you and the way that you connect with the land the way that you enjoy your experience, I want to tell you that is very, very valid. I'll see you all outside. Thank you.